Hello, everyone. I hope that you've all been joining the IDTX conference so far. And my name is Anna. I'm a senior course developer at iSpring Solutions. I have nearly a decade of experience in e-learning and I love sharing all the good features iSpring tools have to offer. But first, let me tell you a little bit more about iSpring. For over 20 years, our company has remained dedicated to providing the exceptional learning experiences to its clients, comprising more than 59,000 educators and millions of learners worldwide. Our clients include over 500 companies, government agencies, and educational institutions worldwide, including Microsoft, Boeing, Dell, PepsiCo, MIT, Stanford, and Harvard University. So you can be sure that iSpring is a global leader in creating award-winning e-learning software. And today, I'm happy to welcome you to our session called From Screencasts to, to Podcasts. Choosing the right training format can be a bit daunting, but we are here to help you pick the best framework for your topics and audience. So first things first, Let's talk about why it's important to choose the right format for your e-learning courses. In the world of e-learning, choosing the wrong format can lead to disengaged employees and missed objectives. However, choosing the right format can be transformative for your business or university classes. Tailored, engaging learning experiences in inspire employees. Picture a workforce not just trained, but genuinely motivated, applying their knowledge to enhance productivity and innovation. Throughout our session, you will learn about training formats that really work and learn why they work. And we will use iSprint tools to show you how these formats work. So before I dive into all the formats, I want to go over a great way to get an idea of which format will work best for your scenario. What I recommend, uh, what I recommend doing is creating a training brief. A training brief is a detailed document outlining a training program, including objectives, content, methods, materials, duration, assessment criteria, trainer info, and logistics. It guides course designers and trainers, ensuring organized and effective training, aligned with participants' needs and learning goals. This information is super helpful for choosing the format. Let us quickly share with you the brief template that our instruction designers use use a dice brain. Let's say you need to teach an employee how to use Excel, a gamified course where a detective hunts for numbers and assembles them into a secret code, but be a choice, right? A course that delves into the history of Excel and an overview of competing tools would not be beneficial either. These ideas focus on approach, while your objective is to help the target audience acquire practical skills. So what a format is best to use then? And let's dive into different types of formats to find out. We will answer the question about the best format for this course at the end of the session. So let's go and move on to our formats. The first format is a slide-based course. It's a training format that uses presentation software and delivers information through sequential slides. It's an approachable and familiar format, ideal for things like compliance training, for example, safety, safety protocols, or employee onboarding for example, benefits information. It's quick and straightforward. 
especially if you're already familiar with PowerPoint. Then creating a slide-based course, breaking down the content into manageable chunks and structuring the slides is a key. This approach provides, this approach proves handy, especially when you need to update information on a regular basis. The limitation of this format would be that the completion of the course depends on the learner's intrinsic motivation. So it's necessary to divide the text into chunks and use some techniques to involve and engage learners. For example, add in some interaction elements. Let's see in an action. Check out this example of a slide-based course created in Icebring Suite. This is a slide-based course with audio narration. It features background music and a narrator's voice. This is a title slide followed by an introduction. A character steps in, guiding learners directly through the material. Slide-based courses are super user-friendly, making them a great format for both you and your learners, regardless of tech skills. They're quick to create and update so you can keep your training materials fresh and relevant. And our next format is called interactive role plays. These are training exercises in which learners engage in simulated conversations with various characters, allowing them to practice communication skills and receive feedback in a risk-free environment. So this format simulates conversations with various personas, like customers, subordinates, or colleagues. Users assume the role of one of these personas and choose responses and receive feedback. This each choice uh, carrying its own set of outcomes. This is a great format for so many scenarios because learners can refine their communication skills and prepare for real world situations besides the fear of making an error with real world consequences, like jeopardizing a deal. This format is indispensable for training sales teams customer service representatives, and technical support staff. For instance, it's ideal for instructing a new salesperson and delivering a compelling product presentation. The dialogues are lifelike, complete with voice, voiced phrases and character reactions, creating an immersive learning experience. It's important to note that in a role play, users select responses from predefined options, holding communication skills or, or learning scripts, but it doesn't teach them to formulate original thoughts to respond with. And this is a limitation to consider. So let's see it in action. So let's click start to engage with the an interactive role play created with Icepring Suite. You will be prompted to interact with the character, make a choice, observe character's reaction, and receive valuable feedback. On this slide, you can see what the dialogue simulation structure looks like. Here we have different scenarios of how the conversation goes depending on the answer. Now, let's move on to the next format. I'm going to talk about long reads. Long reads are in-depth articles or guides that explore topics truthfully, offering detailed insights and analysis. There is not a more time-tested format than the traditional deep dive. For instance, a long, read, a long read module exploring detailed medical case studies could allow healthcare teams to understand research methods, results, and their implications. This in-depth format, for example, is vital to pharmaceuticals researchers and healthcare policy term teams. One shortcoming of the long read format is that it's geared towards teaching, teaching concepts 
rather than practical skills like customer communication. While task questions can be added to interactive articles, they don't facil facilitate hands-on practice for things like customer communication skills. The key of creating a compelling long read is writing clear text and breaking things up with occasional images or other assets. Now, let's take a look at the long read on the screen. It starts with the cover and the title. Next is the introduction and the next chapter button. In the second chapter, we see images that can be enlarged. Moving on to the next chapter, here we have images and a self-assessment test along with our text, providing engaging assets to reinforce the text. Okay, let's move on to our next format, and for today is video courses. Video courses are dynamic learning experiences that blend engaging recorded videos with visuals, providing step-by-step -step instructions and practical demonstrations. Videos are a great way to bring learning, li learning to life, making complex topics accessible and engaging. They provide a visual learning experience that captivates learners, making it an excellent choice for educational content. Creating a video lecture can be a straightforward process. You can record yourself using a webcam, supplementing your talk with supportive visuals. So let's check out this iSpring video lecture example, preparing for a call. You can also watch it by following the link in the chat. Here, an expert is explaining how to prepare for a call with a potential client. Also, you might have noticed that you can insert additional information to your videos. Pop-up text, audio, pictures, and other videos. Our next format, which is definitely differs from another, is interactive video course. This format resembles a first-person computer game, where the employee becomes the main character. And the storyline depends on their choices. This format is based on the real-life situations in which employees must solve a particular task or challenge. For example, it might involve calming an upset customer. The course provides feedback after each choice, helping learner understand their mistakes, their mistakes and prepare for similar situations in real life. I would say it's something like a dialogue simulation, but instead of static images, we have videos. Um, the main downside of this format is that it can be costly and complicated to develop. This might not be the best choice for organizations on a tight budget. Building an interactive video course involves several steps, such as writing a script, planning the visuals, finding suitable locations, um, recording the video, editing it, and putting everything together in an effort. Making changes to the course can also be tricky, so it's important to think it through before deciding on this format. But let's take a look at the example on the screen. In the immersive experience, learners tap into the first-person perspective, observing daily routines, making choices, and seeing the consequences unfold, determine the course progression. We can see a person who spills a coffee on a colleague. Now, he has to, do, to decide what to do. Tell the colleague about it, rub the coffee in, or just keep quiet. Depending on the answer, the story continues differently. It's a dynamic way to engage learners, allowing them to actively participate and shape the learning journey. 
and time to talk about a fun format, one of my favorite ones, games. Games are interactive learning experiences that incorporate gaming elements like challenges, levels, and rewards, engaging learners while enhancing skills and knowledge in a playful way. Have you ever been stuck in a training that felt so tedious that you counted sailing tail tiles? I have been, and unfortunately, not once. And trust me, games can inject life into dense subjects and add excitement and fun to the learning experience. You can add dynamic elements such as levels, points, rankings, and rewards for a level of immersion that's hard to match with other formats. Fighting is a sweet spot where education meets entertainment might sound daunting, but Ice Cream makes even advanced formats easy to create. And let's check out this example of a narrative game-based course, first things first. Once we start and learn about uh, the course settings, we receive an email from our friend, Andrew. Andrew needs our help to become more efficient and we can see that his KPIs doesn't look good. Okay, one more moment and we will definitely see it. Yes. So the course continues this gamified slide where we need to help Andrew find, find his to-do list by clicking on items to move them. Okay, start looking, and here we go. So that's how a game can look like in terms of a training course. Something like um, a leadership role-playing game would be a great use case for this format. You can prepare future leaders in your organization by creating a scenario where employees step into their roles and go through decision-making challenges, learning strategic thinking, team management, and motivational skills along the way. And our next format today is podcasts. They are a captivating audio-based training format that offers flexible and relatable learning experiences. By the way, there's a high chance that your learners listen to podcasts since, for example, 62% of Americans listen to podcasts according to Statista. As for me, I have some of my, some of my favorite episodes of podcasts, but mostly, personally, I prefer video format. But there's one thing that we cannot deny is that podcasts are widely popular for a really good reason. They offer tremendous flexibility. Imagine, instead of a straight lecture, you get a chance uh, to engage your employees through insightful discussions, expert interviews, or engaging narratives bundled in an easy-to-digest audio format. The beauty of podcasts lies in their adaptability. There are company updates or industry insights. Podcasts deliver information in an accessible and relatable manner. You can absorb essential knowledge while working on data entry, admin work, or any other repetitive tasks. Now, you've got employees learning while they work. I mean, isn't it a dream for you and for them? And another major advantage of this format is that you can create compelling content on a shoes-free budget. For example, you don't even need to hire voiceover actors. Voiceovers can be done directly in an offering tool. 
And it's true for Ice Cream Sweet as well, with its great text to speech feature. However, there is one um, drawback of the podcast format that I found. So it may not suit every employee, as it requires processing information through listening, which is not which may not benefit your visual learners. So in this case, I would say it's better to have a written script of the podcast for employees who prefer written to listening. Okay, now let's talk about our next format, which is screencasts. Screencasts are user-friendly visual walkthrough guiding learners through screen recordings, images, text, and clear narration, making complicated topics easily understandable and accessible. Creating a screencast is also straightforward and typically can be done in just a couple of hours. Imagine having a friendly tax, tax expert right by your side, guiding you through every click and shortcut on a new software. That's precisely what Screencast offers, a virtual walkthrough of digital terrain, making the complex seem like a walk in the park. This video tutorial simplifies the learning curve, especially when, you, when exploring corporate portals or CRM systems. Creating a Screencast is as simple as recording yourself doing a process while narrating. In just a couple of hours, you have a comprehensive tutorial ready to roll. The screen recordings, images, text, and crystal clear narration, they are like having your own personal software guide. Screencast offers a offer a quick and easy way to provide software demonstrations, showcasing website navigation, and explaining complex workflows. And updating, no sweat. This too like Ice Cream Suite, keeping your screencast up to date is easy as a click of a button. So I already to see this screencast made using Ice Spring Suite in action. So this screencast show you how to create interaction in Ice Spring Suite. VC mouse movements and the video also has voiceovers for you, for you cannot hear it now, but trust me, it's here. The presenter consistently explains the actions. One of the downsides of the screencast is um, it's another format that's not great for practical skills. So you can actually practice and work within the software. You can only watch an overview of it. Also, if the software interface changes, you will need to update the screencast completely. So it means that we need to move on to another format, which can help you with those practical skills. So let's talk about interactive software simulators. They are incredibly helpful for employees learning new software. These simulations mir mirror the software's interface, giving users a safe space to practice without the worry of making mistakes or losing important data. Using the real software screenshots and videos, these simulators guide users for specific tasks within the software. For example, they can teach employees how to use corporate software tools by capturing real screen actions, making the learning process highly effective. But it's essential to understand the limitations of this format. So interactive software simulators are tailored for training on uh, practical tasks and processes. They may not be ideal choice for tasks like quickly finding information or 
learning keyboard uh, shortcuts. So these I would recommend using a screencast or a slide-based course. As for creating perfect simulations, it can be time consuming and costly, which might not fit every business budget. A best practice is to use simulators for critical systems, systems where errors um, need to be minimized as much as possible and when there's no way to train yourself right inside the software. Users also should access interactive software simulators on the same device they were designed for. For instance, if a course is meant for mobile devices, it's best um, experienced on a mobile device. Additionally, ongoing maintenance and updates especially when software change requires simulators revisions and sometimes it can be time and resource intensive. Um, but despite these factors, interactive software simulators offers a practical and effective way for employees to gain confidence in using essential software applications. Okay, they are done with the main course formats. And I would like to mention two more training formats today. One of them is mobile learning. Mobile learning is the use of mobile devices like smartphones and tablets to deliver educational content, providing learners with the flexibility to accept to access information anytime, anywhere. Its major strength lies in accessibility, accommodating learners' diverse schedules and locations. Imagine technicians have an instant access to updated equipment manuals, troubleshooting guides, and safety protocols on their smartphones while working on site. In situations demanding quick decisions and precise actions, this immediate access ensures they can efficiently address challenges, enhance safety, and maintain operational efficiency. And all of that is possible thanks to mobile learning. In the corporate world, mobile learning provides invaluable for fostering a culture of continuous learning. Employees attending technical workshops can reinforce their learning by accessing relevant articles, videos, and quizzes on their mobile devices, which are helping them to troubleshoot issues effectively and apply best practices in real-time scenarios. This continuous reinforcement significantly enhances the retention and application of knowledge in their roles. And the last but not least format I want to talk about today is microlearning. It's a bite-bite sized focused learning that delivers information in small, easy to digest chunks. Its simplicity is its strength. It's, it is concise, targeted, and tailored to specific learning objectives. In training, microlearning excels at the reinforced knowledge, addressing specific skill gaps, and promoting long-term retention. Its brief, engaging format um, prevents information overload, ensuring learners grasp essential concepts swiftly. Time management makes an excellent application for microlearning. Like, employee can access bite-sized lessons on productivity hacks, effective planning, and prioritization techniques. These modules offer 
practical tips that individuals can immediately implement in their daily routines. One disadvantage of microcourses in the training context is their limited, oh, limited depth of content. Due to their short duration and focused nature, microcourses might not cover topic in an as much detail as longer as training programs. So if you need your team to understand the ins and outs of a new product line, this might not be the best format to use. Now, we will explore various real life examples of course formats tailored to different subjects and objectives. So for instance, a welcome course introducing the company's history, mission, values, and products can be effectively delivered through a long read with embedded videos or a comprehensive learning track. Welcome course is always a long-term study. Therefore, one format is not enough. Combining a welcome video, a detailed long read on the company's background and mission, and a slice slide course highlighting its product line ensures a true understanding. So you definitely, definitely shouldn't make it a single slide course with 200 slides. In contrast, courses on topics such as fire safety or cybersecurity benefit from slide formats or long reads. These formats offer structured delivery of information, enhancing comprehension and retention among learners. Also, long reads are best suited for product courses. The main advantage here is that you can quickly make edits to the long reads if the product line is updated frequently. Then, the video format is not suitable for the same reason. It is very difficult and expensive to make edits. Courses for sales will require a combination of different formats. So long read, slide courses, video lectures, role plays. If we are talking about practicing skills, for example, communicating with clients, then role plays are mandatory. Similarly, courses on personal performance, such as emotional intelligence, uh, public speaking, and Excel skills require different formats. For public speaking, practical assignments allowing participants to apply learned techniques. Topics like emotional intelligence can be effectively conveyed through long reads, providing in-depth exploration and reflection. Software-related courses typically um, utilize screencasts and quizzes to provide hands-on experience. This complex software benefiting from simulators for practical training. Um, in summary, Understanding the content and learning objectives is key to selecting the most suitable course format. Wow, we did it. We've got through a ton of practical formats used in digital learning. So just to sum up, we explored the advantages and great users, uh, uses for slide-based courses interactive role plays, long reads, games, video courses, podcasts, screencasts, micro learning, mobile learning, and software simulators. Next time you create a training, consider these variable formats and watch your learning experience comes to life. Ooh. And if you remember, at the beginning of our today's session, we have to decide what format 
to choose for a course about how to use Excel for employees. Now that you know all the main training formats, let's decide which one is the best to use. So what format is the best to choose for the course on how to use Excel? Right, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Screencast would be the best choice in my opinion. And some screen recordings, images, text, and narration, and you will have a great software guide. And at the end, you can add a quiz for sure for um, to check how your learners remember all the tricks they were shown. Um, for sure, software simulation can also be a great option, but it can cost a fortune and takes much more time than a simple screencast. So remember, if you can train someone directly in the application without any additional effort or cost, then there's no need for a full-fledged software simulator. A screencast will do. And just a last thought at the end of our journey. When deciding on a training format, focus on the course's goals, the people taking the course, and your own skills and experience. If you're new to course creation, um, simple slide courses or video lectures are great choices. Once you've got the hang of it, you can explore different formats. And hopefully, you will now be more confident that you have the knowledge you need to choose the right format. If you do, I'm sure the results will really wow your learners. And if you want to get a presentation from the session, just fill out a little survey. You can just scan the QR code on the screen. Have a wonderful day.